Okay, we're finally through the first layer. So I got six out here, so let's take a look. Let's take a look here. So I have, um, this is, give you an idea, this is my, my Game Boy, this is my Japanese one. Um, I don't really use it because it's got the original screen and everything, but it's really nice condition. I just wanted to show you what that looked like. It's called the Handy Game Machine. Um, what I actually do use for Game Boy playing, <coughs> excuse me, is this Game Boy Advance, which is modified with an IPS screen. So it's like very nice and bright. Um, these are affordable on eBay. Recommend you get one if you're actually going to play um, Game Boy games on a Game Boy system. Okay, first game is. Come on, focus. Pipe Dream. Okay, let's. So this is uh, this did have an American release. I'm pretty sure. So got we've it. Got. We've got the box here. Very good shape. And this is your classic. Um, uh, I used to play this game on DOS. It wasn't called Pipe Dream, but it was something about else about pipes. And uh, this is your classic puzzle game. You have like a water source at one end. Here's the cartridge here. You have like a water source at one end and a certain amount of time to connect a bunch of pipes. Um, usually to go either to an exit or to as long as you can go. So okay. I'm going to try this on my Super Game Boy 2. Okay, so this is in full English, so that's good. Yeah, I was saying this earlier to Raf that... Um, yeah, like a lot of these are just simply in English, so it's it's good there. So let's turn up the volume a little bit here. This is a, a Lucasfilm game, believe it or not. Hmm. Let's get some music here. I really love Game Boy music. It's like slightly more powerful than NES music. All right, let's play a level here. Okay, so we're loading from the bottom, it looks like here. Okay, let's see. I gotta go this way, I think. Ooh, that was pretty good. Um, can I go through here? No. Uh oh, I screwed up already. I didn't get a good one for the second tile, and I died already. Okay, let's try one more. Game over. How embarrassing! First so, game, I lasted for like a, just a moment. So, so I'm not sure where to take the liquid or whatever. I think it's usually just um, as Off like a high score kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's try and be a little more... And be a little faster here. See if I can get around here. Nope. Uh, I'd say this would be a good game to kill some time. You know, if you're waiting for a train or a bus. Yeah. Okay, I need a vertical. There's a vertical. Alright, I'll <laughs> give it one more go. So yeah, I used to play this on like, one of those DOS... Um, you know, a thousand and one games. I wonder if anybody else what the original is, like the actual original original of this game. So you can overwrite old tiles uh, if you are so inclined, but it obviously it takes a second. So I'm gonna try and do that. No, let's go this way instead. Hmm. I actually used to play a variant of this uh, on. Um, uh, it was a, a, a Sesame Street game, uh, one of the educational <laughs> games, and it was like Ernie's bathtub, and you would uh, have to try and get the water <laughs> as far as possible. Same idea. Ooh, I really got myself into a, a pickle here. If I don't get a cross one to come back over before that water gets in there, I'm in big trouble. But let's see if I can do it. Oh, there's a cross. I see it. Okay. Oh, I go. messed up. I messed up. Okay, there's a cross. And I need... That's there. That's there. I need, a, I need two verticals. Oh, no. I don't... Oh, you do. You lose a bit of... Po Every time you overwrite one, you lose some points. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Oh, there's a cross. Oh, look at that. That's excellent. 
There we go, there we go. Okay, so we're actually... <laughs> I only want to spend a few minutes on each game, but I yeah. think uh, this is a, a fun, playable game, so we'll give this its its due. Yes. This is cool. So yeah, I mean, I could see, you know, totally uh, seeing how far you could really get with this without uh, trying to fill the screen, right? Trying to go, like, really fill the screen. Yep. Probably an AI somewhere that can solve this game. Ooh, I'm definitely almost at the end of what I can do here. Ooh, that was a mistake. Definitely addictive. Definitely... Once you get going. Yeah. Okay. How much more can I really do here? I actually did a pretty good job filling this up. Hold on, that's about it. Is there a button to... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I overwrote one by... <laughs> I was trying to, like, test the buttons to see if there was a way to speed up the water. You can. Okay, select speeds it up. All right, there you go. Oh, cool. 4350. Not bad. Yeah. So I don't know if they all take that long but to open. But I can continue playing this one until... Uh, okay, yeah. Next well, let's move on to the next one. So, okay, that was great. Um, that was an excellent... Um, cool. Addition to the, addition to the collection. I'm okay. not gonna put the uh, little tiny bag back on the cartridge because that'll take forever. Okay, I need like a pile here. Okay, next one we have is um, Saga by Square. Now this okay. one may have something interesting <coughs> about it, so let me take a look here. DMG. Which one is it? E-M-G-S-A-J. Let's see if we can find the actual title here. So this is Makai uh, Tsushi Saga. So M-A-K-A-I-T-O-U. See if you can find it. Go up to, uh, go to M. Go to M-A-K-A-I. M-A-K, there it is down there, Saga. Okay, there we go. There we go. All right, so he's going to load it up for me, and we're going to take a look at those. So this is by Square, you know, of Final Fantasy, Chrono Trigger fame. Um, I know the Saga series on some other um, consoles. Um, so it's definitely in Japanese. Yes. Okay, this is actually great. This is a, this has a neat story. So, um, let's see if you can get to the main screen here. See if you can, so we have a text intro. See if you can like press any buttons to get through. Yep. Um, because this game was repurposed as Final Fantasy Legend uh, in the Ooh. US. So take a look at those characters there. And then like uh, yeah, there. pick somebody. <laughs> okay. Oh, this will be fun. Can I name them some random characters? Okay. Yeah, you might offend somebody if you uh, you think you're a picking one... random characters, but who knows? <laughs> That's true. Okay. Okay. So hey, I'll Pokemon. let. Uh... Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna pl plug the cartridge in to get some audio. I only have audio from me, not from um, not from Ralph. Okay, Raf, do you want to try loading up Final Fantasy Legend from the American folder? And we'll do a comparison here. Sure. Oh. Uh, oh I keep losing my um, signal here. All right, just loading the uh, the folder. Sorry, what was the name? Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy Legend. I've got two of them here. Oh, three of them. Mm, okay. Just pick Final Fantasy. Uh, oh. oh, that's probably one, oh, two, and go. three. So try and find number one. There right. you go. Yeah, same year, 1989. Now let me be sure I've got the right um, information here because... just want to make sure that it's indeed... Uh, this one, what did I see... 
Ooh, his name was Red Bull. There you go. So yeah, there you go. It's pretty neat, eh? So it's obviously the same same game. So let's just uh, yeah, pick somebody and get started, and let's see if we get the same Red Bull. Yep, pretty much the same. Yep. So yeah, I don't know if we'll be able to do very much in this. Uh, I don't know if we can. You know, usually the first uh, part of a you know RPG like this would be. Uh, you know, checking out the town, talking to people. You'll probably tell me that's locked. Okay, so um, I don't okay. know if you can do very much in this one. So I'll, let's uh, let's let's move on from this one. So this sure. will be a cool one for the collection. Uh, Probably just for the um, the interest of the um, the story, the fact that it was repurposed later. So that's pretty cool. I like it. I like having. Uh, I, I typically avoided bothering to get RPGs um, for my collection because they're not you know playable from the cartridge generally. But that's okay. Well, I guess if you know the the American version well enough, there could be a challenge. Yeah, that's true. And actually, you know, a lot of speedrunners choose that too. Okay, let's see what we've got next. All right, let's go for something. Let's pick another one here. Okay. Okay, next one we have here is Yoshi's Cookie. This will definitely be um, probably okay. the same. same so Japanese I have one that's English. Yoshi No Cookie. Yep, that's it. Okay. Yoshi no cookie. This is uh, one of the four player playable, um, if you were to get a four player link. So let's put the cartridge in here. See, these are amazing. Like to get these things, these cost me less than $10 each. And they're all like seemingly brand new. They all still have their little cartridge thingy in there. Oh, I keep losing my uh, connection here. So this is a classic puzzle game. So you move the rows and columns, yeah. presumably, to line them up. There you go. So, kind of Tetris? Yeah. But in multiple directions. That's cool. Oh yeah, they come in from all sides. That's interesting. <coughs> oh, have you cleared the stage? Yeah. Clear everything. Um, interesting there, I don't know if it came across the stream, but um, Game Boy is in true stereo, and uh, that was not correct for... Sorry, that was not true for... <coughs> Uh, NES. NES was um, mono, although the channels were created separately, so you could do a stereo mod, although it just really meant that half the voices came out of one side and half came out of the other. There we go. Clear that stage. <laughs> Me too. Uh, this one's fun. This okay. one's fun. Alright. Oh. Uh, yeah, I guess we can move on. Um... Okay, so that was Yoshi No Cookie. Uh, this is one that um, I did not... Well, almost all these I don't have, actually, but this is one that I had kind of always intended to get. But this is such a common game that, you know, I didn't really want to spend just the 5 bucks and then pay, like, the $10 on top of it for all the fees, um, you know, from from uh, using uh, auction proxy service. So... Even though these games can be very cheap, if you're buying from Yahoo Japan, I'd really recommend trying to get lots of things because you only pay the fee once. If you're buying individual ones, you'll get a fee <coughs> for each one. If you can find what you want on eBay, though, there's no fees. You just pay the shipping, and the shipping is cheap and fast. Mm. Okay, what do we got here? Next one. This is um, DMG 
C7J. Let's take a look at that. C7J. I do. I can kind of read um, Katakana, but it'd be like <sighs> Kurudo. I can't read it. I can't read it fast enough, especially under the pressure of being on the internet. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I got Kurudo right. Oh, so yeah, Kurudo cult. Cult jump. Okay, let's take a look at this. Let's see what we got here. Cult jump. Yep, I found it. So again, and really nice, really nice crispy yeah, box. Yeah. I don't know if we have. Let's see if we can figure out. There's like a look at that. There's a, oh, this is like, might might be related to like Shonen Jump or something because there's like Goku's on the front there or some sort of Saiyan. I guess I don't know if it's actually. I assume these are all um, mascots from various anime. I think that's Fist of the North Star guy. I don't know their names, unfortunately. Oh dear. Okay. So this appears to be a straight up. Appears to be a straight up RPG. So we're not going to get very far in this one. Let's take a listen. Let's take a look and a listen and see. Um, this I'm is cool. Pretty sure there is no um, English version of this because these are characters that I think would not even be necessarily oh. known. This might be trivia. Trivia? Okay. Yeah. Let's see what it says here. Do we have any information? Yeah, because look, it's asking me questions and there's a time limit. Oh, maybe it is. And, and I got the answer. It's like 50 50. Interesting. Yeah, I think it is. It looks like it does not. Quiz trivia game released in 93. Yeah, this is a quiz game. Yep. So you have to know all about all these. Um... <laughs> so I wonder if Cult Jump has to do with like Shonen Jump. I guess I don't know what Cult Jump is. Man, I'm doing good for Gresson here. Okay. Cult Jump is an adventure trivia video game developed by Bandai for Game Boy. Yeah, so this features uh, people on the front from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. So yeah, there's a uh, there's a lot of guys in this that you would know. So if you knew all these um, animes, you would know this game. You would know all the characters in this game. Sorry. So yeah. Hmm. So I don't think we're gonna get very far. Register my name there. Yeah, I got okay. I got pretty far. Yeah. This maybe this I would mean, be. It, it's a fifty percent chance of getting the answer right. Okay. Good music and everything. Oh, yeah. Quiz, quiz trivia, dungeon crawler game. Okay. All right. Well, we're not gonna get very far in this. I'm, congratulations on getting as far as you did, blank by <laughs> blindly, just <laughs> checking different ones. That's funny. It's interesting that when you get it correct, it's it's not a check mark. It's a, it's an O. Yeah, that's um that is a Japanese thing for sure. So that's uh, okay. hmm. One of the reasons on um, Sony controllers, uh, U.S. versus American, you'll find um, which is the, the the like enter versus go back. So usually here X is like go forward, and the circle would be go back, and in Japan it's reversed because um, the circle is kind of a, a con confirmation. Huh. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off there. So let's see this one. I'm great at guessing. Yeah, okay. good cool. job. Okay. Next one up, we have. Well, this one I can read because it's also in English. We have Tamagotchi. I assume it's just like the Tamagotchi. Oh, that's interesting. Don't add <clears> that. <throat> maybe it's some, maybe it's under something else. Yeah, let me see what the full title is here. Uh, it starts with um, game. It starts with the word game. Let's take a look here. This is uh, what we got here. DMG. 
ETAG. So this um, game to hack in Tamagotchi. Oh okay. yeah, so you're in the right you're in the right section there for sure. Let me just. Hey, check this out. This came with a bonus. Is there any other text behind it? Um, it'll be that one. Okay. Oh, so that one says Super Game Boy Enhanced. So we should both get Super Game Boy Borders on this one. What's in color? Nice. Oop. I'm going to try and to find the settings options here. This music's catchy once it loads. Okay, I to, cartridge is not clean here. Let's just try that again. Oh, no good. Oh, I should have brought some cleaning solution here. But do the classic. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> I'm getting closer. The the amount that you can read the Nintendo logo is how close it is to working. So this is not quite there. Oh, I had a I had a Tamagotchi. No, I had yeah. a Baby Nano. So here's what I actually need. I actually have isopropyl alcohol and a um, Q-tip right here. Perfect. I think someone told me once not to use isopropyl because it uses it leaves like a residue or something like that. But I don't know if I believe that. Okay, give it a quick clean. Let's see if that brings us closer to Tamagotchi. No, it doesn't. It's possible, you know. No one said these things would all last forever. Let's try one more time here, and if not, I'll try it on my Game Boy. Maybe we'll have better luck on there. Oh, there it goes. So, I was about to show you this here. The um, came with uh, stickers. I've got a whole little sheet of stickers that have lasted this long. Oh, cool. This math's, uh, I can do this. All right. I seem to have lost mine. Input here. I seem to have lost my video input. It's very strange. Mm. Are you discovering anything with yours? Uh, no, it just seems like a typical Tamagotchi, but he seems pretty angry. I'm gonna see if this will. If I lost my video feed completely here or what? difficulties here. I'm going to reset my StarTech here and see if that helps. So I can't figure out why he's got, he's thinking bad thoughts. <laughs> uh. There we go. Okay, my capture is back. There we go. Yeah, math's fun. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. Got Yoshi egg here.
So I've got a custom uh, Super Game Boy border on mine. Ooh, dog is barking. Oops. Hmm. Uh, just Very for anybody good. watching, I have no control where this guy's going. <laughs> <laughs> and he's getting all the answers wrong. I've got wrong. food here. I've got my rice ball. All vi very video gamey looking uh, foods. Oh, he's mad. Can you play a game? Oh, he's eating it. Oh, oh give him ice cream. We're going to play a game. Happy. We're going to play a game okay. here. We're going to play Bounce a Ball. Oh, I can't read these. Ooh, it looks just like, um... Ooh, we got one. These little mini-games here are not so bad. Not that I'm any good at them, but I mean... Which one did you choose? The, the baseball one? The ball one, yeah. Oh, he's mad at me. I had a, uh, I had like a boot like Tamagotchi when I was a kid. It was from my convenience store and it had like a whole ton of um, different creatures. I think I liked the crab. Yeah. What did I have? I had a baby nano. Baby nano. Yeah. It was like, it was like basically like a Tamagotchi, but it was just called a baby nano. You had to change its diaper and stuff all that. Yeah. That kind of stuff. I remember the period where you were like, you would like expect your parents to take care of it. Yeah. Because they banned them at school, right? And you would have to <clears throat> ask your parents if they wouldn't mind taking care of it for the day. That didn't last very long. Okay. Okay, next up, we have wrestling game for sure. Uh, DMG FMJ. Let's see. FMJ. So this is... Oop. I'm going to have to put this in quotes because it's coming... A up with other stuff that's not related. New Japan Pro Wrestling, The Three Musketeers. Oh, we can see original price here. Original price was 1900 yen, or at least it was at some point in its career. Is it The Three Musketeers? Uh, look for Shin. Shin, Shin Nippon Pro Wrestling. S-H-I-N. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Oh, this is cool. This actually has photos in it. Of, uh, there we go. Is it the uh, Shin Nihon wrestling. Pro Wrestling? Yes. Tokun Sanjusi? Yep. Should be correct. By uh, Very? Very, yep. Yeah. Okay. Very Corporation. Very, very. Okay, so there's only one player, <laughs> but they, they let you know. Or can you change it? No, I can't. Oh, this is cool. So if you hold both of them, if you hold both buttons, it's a it's a grapple, I think. Okay, let's take a look here. Ooh, we have oh, English nice. English menu anyway. You know, there's a lot of <coughs> fans of. Wrestling games. I've never really been one. I mean, I definitely enjoyed the like. Uh, ooh, it slammed. Definitely enjoyed uh, like the the like WrestleMania era of uh, wrestling on um, say, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, 
And uh, I, I do remember having fun maybe the first time I ever tried a uh, N64, like Warzone or WF Warzone, I think was the one. Uh, just yeah, my it was first fun to do. My first one on uh, what was it? Um, N64 was NWO Revenge. Yep, I remember that one. And uh, it actually it actually spilled onto the web. So I don't know if you ever knew about it, but or if you heard of them. Uh, basically, there were these like Angel Fire websites where you could like pretend to be a wrestling character. Yeah, I never and understood would, that. So you would smack talk and you would like you know. Do everything in these like uh, <laughs> message board posts. Yeah. And, bas and basically, some guy would run the game. Yeah. Like in CPU versus CPU of your character, and then uh, and then he would post the results of who won. Oh, that's the, like, so interesting. Yeah. So what I remember uh, related to that is I had a friend who was into one of those, and specifically, it was um, pretty sure it was Simpsons characters. Okay. So, I mean, I don't think it actually had that component you're talking about of the, like, CPU matches, but, um, yeah, for sure, he would, like, yeah, they would, like, you know, be a character, like, be, you know, Chief Quimby or something like that, and I, th I can't remember if they, like, took it really seriously, or if they just had, um, if it was all a joke, like, I don't know if the whole thing was, like, Simpsons jokes, or if it was just, like, hmm. No, it was right. funny. I mean, when was it? It was like 1999 or something yeah. like that. Yeah, it was fun. All right. Okay, let's move on to another one. Uh, I'm certainly terrible at these, so I don't have any. So I. Don't have any interest in sticking around on that for too long. <clears throat> I think wrestling is one of those things that's uh, got to be simply hard to translate to um, to video games in general. But I mean, they've always been around. Okay, what do we got next? What do we got next? Okay, now we're into the second set here. There we, we are getting on a little bit in uh, time here, so it's possible. I might skip through some if I just know that they're completely unplayable. Uh, we're having a lot of fun with the first couple games, so I feel like we're yeah. spending more time than I originally thought we would. thought we'd try and power through these at like three minutes each, but that's obviously not particularly possible. Okay. Oh, it's not our, not our fault that's fun. Yeah, that's true. Okay, we've got a whole bunch here. Yeah, there are definitely a couple we can skip here for sure. Okay, thank you, Cellophane. You're doing your job. Okay, so it looks like we have two copies of the same game here, so let's get these ones out of the way. Uh, this appears to be... <clears throat> uh, what does this say here? Uh... Dragon Quest Monsters. Dragon Quest Monsters. This is, uh, I think, this is um, the same game, but this one on the right appears to be Game Boy Color version. Mm. So you seen? Are you seeing Dragon's Quest? Dragon no, I Quest. see Dragon's Lair. Dragon or dra Quest. Uh, you know what? Um, these are. I'm confused actually a little bit here. So this is interesting because these are, this one on the right is showing color Game Boy and black and white Game Boy, but on the front um, doesn't have the spine. So maybe this is a slightly later release that has the Game Boy Color spine on the side. So um, I won't spend much time on this one. I'll load it up for a second. You may not have it, Raph, because I don't think I, um, I think this counts as a Game Boy Color game and I don't think you have those loaded. Right. So I'll just, I'll just bring it up just for a moment just so we can kind of get a flavor of what's going on here. Dragon Quest, uh, Dragon Warrior for most of its life here in the USA. So you would have... Um, and this is number one. And I'm not sure if Dragon Dragon Warrior Monsters... I'm trying to picture... Oh, okay, I can. I can picture the, the cover for the US version. So it does exist. Nice um, Super Game Boy border in this one. With changing backgrounds, that's cool. So we have a mm. four person. Let's see if I can <coughs> get out of the throne room here. I, I always hope for games like this to have like a, a fight really early on. 
This one seems to kind of put you right in the middle of it because um, I already have my characters. Nobody said anything to me right away. I wonder it's if these a... two versions of it that I have here, I wonder if they have the exact same number. I think it's just a random, random fight that pops up anyway. Oh, so I was just hoping that there would be one if I walked around. I think Game Boy games would be good to learn Japanese on, because it looks like almost all of it's in Katakana or Hiragana, so you can actually read it phonetically. You still have to look up a lot of the uh, words, but there's no, not very much kanji, so... You wouldn't be trying to identify pictograms, you'd just be looking up phonetically. Oh, uh, Robert Kreese in the chat says, A couple of days uh, ago I realized that you can play a two-player dual Game Boys on Mr. Yeah. It looked awesome on a, it looked awesome on a CRT. Yeah, that I didn't is, know that. um, yeah, somebody, <coughs> I don't know if it's in the main, um, repository yet, but, um, yeah, somebody just realized there was room for two, uh, Game Boy Cores in, in Mister and hooked it up that way, it's great. Nice. <clears throat> It'll be cool if one day we have a external link between two actual Misters, that'd be really cool, I think. Alright, I'm gonna move on from this one, because it's another RPG, but, um... Yeah, so let me take a look here. I just want to look quickly at the other box. See if the cartridges are the same. A little bit oh, there you go. Look at that difference. So we've got... Um, we have the gray cartridge versus the black cartridge. So gray cartridge usually meant uh, Game Boy black and white only. Black usually meant dual compatibility. So just out of curiosity, I wonder if the gray cartridge has um, Super Game Boy ability. To see if it loads up its um, the border just for interest's sake. It does. Okay. Cool. Okay. Oh, cool. So yeah, this is interesting. This must be among the first Game Boy Color games um, to come out because they hadn't settled on this uh, uh, black cartridge versus gray cartridge stuff. So kind of neat. I mean, having two of the same game in the uh, auction is a bit annoying, but uh, if they're different. <laughs> Can't complain. For collectability's sake. So I have no idea if these kind of games will ever be worth anything. They do have the same the same UPC code, so that it's not considered a separate project uh, product anyway. So hmm. um, I don't know if these things will ever be worth anything. I think the like volume of available games in um, Japan was so much higher. Okay, now we've got something fun here. So we've got we've got Wario Land. Really nice copy of it too. Mm, Wario Land? Wario Land. Look up um, Super Mario Land 3. Super Mario Land 3, Wario Land. Wario. I have Super, I have Super Mario Land 2. Yeah, so we need Super Mario Land 3. Um, Mario? Let's take a look here. Go, yeah, go up to Mario nope. and see if it's there. No way. Go nope. down, and go down to W again. Hmm. Let's take a look here. So this is... Could it be... Maybe it was just the exact same for the U.S., maybe? Um. Yeah, it should be close enough. Wario Land. Yep. Hmm. Weird that it's not in your Japanese one. No, it's not. Oh. So this game is great. Um, I was playing this on my Game Boy. I already have a copy of this one, but this is actually a definite upgrade on the, um, the quality. The one I have is totally messed up. Um, the box is all crushed, so this is nice to have a, a better version here. So this is just your, um, this is actually very similar to Super Mario Land 2 in terms of the gameplay, um, the size it's of the huge. characters and everything. Yeah, exactly. Oops. Oh, here we go. I've got a... What do I have here? I've got a power-up. Hmm. 
Let me see what's down here. Oh, I, oh, that's the power up. Okay. Now he's small. Uh, it's a pretty um, it's a nice, easy game in that it allows you to both jump on the character and like crash into them. It's actually kind of rare. Usually these games will pick one or the other. I always found with the platform as kind of the first thing you're figuring out is, is this a jumping on top of game or a hitting with sword game, whatever you're doing, charging. Just when you're charging at somebody. long level for a first level. Yeah. I don't know if it's looping. Did I not notice that it's looping or something? Also the... Um, oh, there's the end of it there. He kind of glides down when you jump. Yeah, I think if you have... Um, one of the power-ups has a glide. What's this mole man doing here? Oh, he's showing you that the uh, coins allow you to open the doors. Oh. I died. Oh, I got a little mini game here. I get to choose, I guess. Oh, I got hit with 10 tons instead. Oof. I am not winning at this mini game. Oh, there you go. I got some cash. <laughs> I only got, I only doubled. Mm. I only doubled my cash. I think it looks exactly the same as the US version because I'm playing the US version. Oh right yeah, now. it'll be it'll be the same. Yeah, so I don't see any any text. I mean, a game from Nintendo like this too. Um, yeah, I think you can count on it to uh, try and be as uh, internationally minded as possible. So just trying to remove the need for translations is always um, cost effective, and you know if you can get by. Yeah simply by um, you know showing off what you want to do instead of instead of having to type it out then you're oh. further ahead so he turns into a viking if you power up while he's still uh, double powered up you notice that that you get viking yeah I think here? that's I think that's probably strengthens your other so I, I got like a <laughs> I got like a crocodile head and it's a flamethrower nice I don't know what the connection is there, but that's okay. Uh, what, what's the year on this game? I didn't... Oh, this would be... Does it say on here? 93. Mm. So, um, this would definitely be towards the end of the non Super Game Boy Advance, uh, Super Game Boy Enhanced uh, games, I think. 93 seems a bit late, because like, Game Boy came out in 89, I think? Uh, should check that. How do I take this coin? You are correct. 1989 to 2003. Oh, I see. I think if you have the Viking hat, you can do a stomp. Okay, um, I guess we should move on. Um, how, yeah, how are you doing in the cool. uh, Mickey game there? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I think I did it right. Okay, let's see what else is going on here. Okay, so this is another great one for the collection. Um, I can get rid of the slightly worse version that I had. 
uh, on my shelf already. Oh, uh, Robert asked in the chat, uh, he says, yeah, it's a cool cool idea to play the game, same game. Yeah, we actually do this quite often. Um, it's funny, we, we were doing this on Twitch for a while, but this is our first time back on YouTube. Very loud. So. Yeah, I mean, um, I think something like this, I think this, you know, I'll probably edit this down a little bit after we're done, but um, I think this might be interesting for people kind of as we go along. But normally on Saturdays, we'll do a stream um, on Twitch. And, you know, I just think of Twitch as a little more of a, uh, you know, you do it live and then it disappears kind of thing, whereas I think YouTube is where I want to keep videos that people may want to look at for longer. So this next game here, we have Game Boy Gallery, known in the U.S. as um, Game & Watch Collection. So there's a couple of these, so I'm glad to at least get one of them. I've been, same thing, I'm kind of watching, hoping I could get um, all of them, but... And they're cheap individually, but I just didn't want to pay the fees on them individually. So we have a nice yeah. manual here, kind of an interesting, um, it's like, it's a much better, it's like not glossy paper, but it's full color, which is uh, rare for Game Boy manuals. It's in great shape. Advertising the Game Boy Pocket. It's pretty cool. Ooh, look at that. All the different colors and everything. So this is a collection of, um, Game & Watch games, so these are the simple LCD games that Nintendo sold, um, you know, prior to the Game Boy itself. So it's uh, the grandfather or something, if you want to call it that. Well, this is interesting. It's supposed to help Toadstool Ross. Okay, so let's take a look here. So I got nice backgrounds. I got Yoshi's Island style backgrounds. It's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to try, I think Fire is a classic one. Um, ooh, I don't know what the select is that's showing up here. Oh, let's see if I can figure this out. Okay, this is this thing. <laughs> oh boy. Oh man, get get it. No. Oh, so they're, they're mini games. Yeah, they're mini games. I think they might be okay. different. So I'm not sure if yours is... Yours looks like it's enhanced. I picked fire. What was yeah. yours called? I don't know. It was all in... I just picked a random one. Oh, interesting. Was, did yours show up in... Um... Here, I'll, here, I'll reload it. Yeah, do a reset. Yeah, yeah it is. See. Yes, mine is enhanced. Yeah. Game Boy Gallery Japan. Yeah, that should be the right one. I don't know. This seems fairly. This seems quite easy. <laughs> oh, now there's like two of them. Okay. So. Oh, here we go. Yeah, no, I picked manhole. Oh, okay, I see. It. Okay. Well, let's pick oil panic. Yeah, I'm gonna try a different one too. Let's go back here. So it's interesting that they show you the uh, SNES controller. Yeah. So I guess they were. Uh, maybe it can recognize that we're both playing Super Game Boy. Okay. I bet if you load it up on the Game Boy itself, you wouldn't get that. Uh, you wouldn't get that graphic. I'm gonna try Oil Panic. Left right Kai Kai Tun Oh, I think you're supposed to catch the oil <clears throat> and then pass it out. This is weird. Oh yeah, I think you have to pass it out to Yoshi if he's there. Is that it? Oh. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay, oh. yeah, yeah. Yoshi apparently is eating it. Yeah, Yoshi eats, eat, eats pretty much anything. Interesting. There we go. Oh, I see. You can hold up to three drops in each one. Oh, I wasted. Oh, dang. I screwed up. You got Luigi? I think it's Donkey Kong down there. Donkey Kong Jr., maybe. Well, on I the right, it. I think it's Luigi. Is it Luigi on the left? I think on the left, it's the original Donkey Kong Jr. Yep. Yep. Oh, okay. Okay, that was fun. Uh, yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. Um, there's a series of these. There's at least one more. 
Robert, if you're here, you're talking about. Uh, I have a question just about um, about handheld gaming in Sweden. Can you let me know if if you remember seeing the Supervision, the Watara Supervision in Sweden? I I bought a system and a bunch of games, and I believe it came from that area. Um, I can't remember exactly which country it came from, but I was wondering if it was um, uh, if that was popular or if it just was. Just, you know, coincidence that I bought that there. Okay, next we have Super Mario Land 2, six golden coins, a classic. Also in great shape. I think this also will replace one that I already have that's um, just not as in great shape as this one. This has really been worth it for the, um, just the quality of uh, what I've got here. Mm-hmm. Now this is a super duper classic. I've played through this multiple times. I'm pretty sure I had this as a as a youngin. Oh, looks like it's frozen. There. Let me try that again. So I'm playing on a Super Game Boy 2. Uh, super Game Boy 2 was only released in Japan and uh, just supposed to be basically a slightly updated version of Super Game Boy 1. Um, ooh, look at this. It still has the uh, save file. Hmm. I wonder if it has a replaced battery or not. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to clear it. I'm just going to pick one I'm gonna play a later level since Raph's on the first level. It was right at the castle. Cool. Alright, I'll play a bit of the castle. Um, <clears throat> Super Game Boy 2 uh, supposedly uh, improved the actual like video refresh rate, which wasn't quite um, accurate on the Super Game Boy 1, uh, and added the link cable on the side, so you could actually link um, two of these together, which is pretty neat. Kind of wish I actually had bought two. Uh, ooh, I didn't understand. Kind of wish I had actually bought two Super Game Boy Twos. They're going up in value. Um, there's many ways to play Game Boy games, but this has got to be one of the best. Especially, I'm playing with an RGB cable on a CRT, so this is like a really great setup if you're concerned with original games. Uh, but of course, you know, Raph is playing on Mister, and it can access all the same features, and it can display on a CRT anyway. So. Yep. You know, I think I think collecting is just uh, a fun thing to do, and it's not necessary to enjoy games at all. So, <laughs> yep. Yep. which I am playing on a CRT here, a, a lovely E machine. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's the yeah. your VGA monitors. So you're playing slightly slightly upscaled by by one X, probably, right? Yeah. There is no, a, yeah, uh, a Super Game Boy controller by Hori called the Super Game Boy Commander. I've been after that for a while too, but I haven't seen a good price. I kind of want it boxed. And uh, it's about a hundred bucks normally, so I'm kind of waiting for a nice auction to show up on on uh, Yahoo Auctions. Uh, no, Robert has not seen that console. He had to no. Google it. I don't know. How I'm supposed to get through here. Ooh, is there something? Oh, so there? Robert, if you're uh, if you're watching here, actually, and you're interested in Mister, uh, I'll tell you about my next project. Not that I do many, but my uh, my next project is actually to put. Um, one of my misters, or one of the DE10 nano boards Oof. inside a uh, Commodore 64, like a real Commodore 64, and use the uh, keyboard itself. So uh, that's good. That's pretty much the hard part about that is just going to get the keyboard to interact, act as like a USB uh, yeah, keyboard I think, itself. I think that's a really cool, um, really cool idea to try and use the keyboard itself. I think you'll run into some problems, uh, not problems, but like things to solve regarding the um you know some of the function keys you have to use so it'll be interesting to see how you how you decide to do that since you're programming yeah. it you could do all sorts of combination keys right yeah so i mean i think <clears throat> i'll have to what i was planning to do is uh, make the commodore key uh, like a uh, like a macro like a function so that, key you know, yeah well i think you need windows f12 in order to get to the cores right uh you can always just press f12 except in the ao486 core Right. To bring up the whole menu, but yes, you do need at least F12, and I don't, th <laughs> I don't actually think the Commodore, like, literally has an F12 on it. I think it only goes up to eight, doesn't it? Or seven? No, no, I think you're right, eight, because there's four. There's four. Yeah. Ooh, I died. Okay, let's move on. Um, this yeah, is yeah. a great game. This is absolutely still worth playing through these days. If you are looking for something fun on Game Boy and you haven't played Mario Land Two, definitely it's the best one. 
The first one, you know, looks a little primitive these days. Uh, controls a bit primitive, still fun, and has a great soundtrack. But Mario Land 2 is where it's at. It's a short game. I think it's six worlds of a few um, levels each, and uh, and the boss fight. So, all right. So the next few things here, we're, we're, I'm going to skip a few here because we're getting to the Game Boy Color stuff, which Raph isn't going to have. And these are like certainly games that don't have an English translation and are not useful. So this one is. Um, let's see. What we got here. Uh, let's see if I can look. I have to look this up because I don't know what this one is called. This is. Um, Where's my DMG? DMG uh, P A C seven J. This is called like Piri Piri Pocket or something, isn't it? What do you think? Toki Meki Memorial Pocket Culture. <laughs> oh, uh... So if this is a true, oh, it's a black game. Okay, so I, I can put it in. The black cartridge it will play on the Super Game Boy too. If it's a true color cartridge, it would not. But uh, what's the name again? Uh, it's called um, Tokimeki Memorial Pocket Culture. Okay. Let's see. It's a Konami game. Tokimeki Memorial. No, not there. No. Try this here. See if I can find another title here. Yeah, it should be called Tokimeki Memorial. So uh, I don't see it. Tokimeki Memorial Pocket. The Toki Senki? I don't think so. I don't know. This is uh, <laughs> this has got to be an anime kind of thing. Oh, it's got voice samples. Rare to hear. Oh yeah. So this is going to be a, impossible to do anything on. Right, uh, so I was just gonna, uh, yeah, Robert, that'd be cool. But uh, finding an Atari ST here for a reasonable pro price, and here is Canada, is very hard. Yeah, I have, uh, I happen to have two Atari STs, but I did pay quite a bit for each of them. I think uh, here on our local uh, classified ads that they're minimum five hundred bucks, and they may be working. That's well, I think that's what people would list them for. I would say that. Um, I got a fairly nice set, like uh, boxed everything, like monitor, um, the system, and an extra drive. I think I, I think I eventually paid about three fifty Canadian, so that would be in the range of like two, two sixty, two seventy US, mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty good. Uh, and it mostly worked. I had some issues. I have to fix it. Okay, yeah. so we also have. Um, we're gonna skip a few here. So we also have Hamtaro two. Um, this uh, this actually might be the single most common game. I think I remember reading that somewhere. Um, we got Hamtaro 1 here, but not Hamtaro 2. And this is a true Game Boy Color game, so this would not actually play in my um, Super Game Boy 2. But I could actually I can show you what a Game Boy Color game looks like on a modded Game Boy Advance. I highly recommend uh, Game Boy Advance. So oh, it's no good. Han Hamtaro? How, how do you spell it? Uh, it's Hamtaro. It Ham, Ham, Hamutaro. I think it actually starts off uh, to, to, Tony. To, <laughs> I, okay. I think it starts off with tiny. I think the first word is tiny. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, let's see if I get anything. Yeah, tiny, I have Tiny Toons Adventure. No, this is... Uh, I just, I'm probably reading it wrong. It's got something there. Um... Yeah, this is a nice backlit uh, Game Boy Advance. This will focus in very close right now. Oh, that's pretty good. So your little hamster, doing your hamster thing. Uh, I'll totally skip this one, actually, because this is uh, not going to be playable. I don't know what's going on. Um, we did get Hamtaro, the first one, and it was very popular here, but we got two in uh, two in Japan. Okay, so that's uh, another one of the, for looking only, and then, okay, so we got more more of these, uh, like, anime, hmm. anime girl. These actually might be, like, dating sims. I can't tell. There's some, some iffy photographs on the back here. 
<laughs> so I'm skipping that one too. But that's um, another another one. Skip that one. Uh, what else we got in here? Uh, Star Ocean. Um, now we may start. We may have to skip all these because actually thinking about it now, you can look for Star Ocean, but I don't think you will have that because it's uh, Game Boy Color. Game Boy Color. Let's pop it in here anyway and see what we get for. Star Sweep. Super Game Boy mode. I don't know if it would be enhanced or not. No, so interesting. Oh, yeah, we're getting a border. Perfect. Okay, so uh, cool border anyway. So Star Ocean is a popular series anyway. Uh, but I don't believe... Let's continue. Let's just get right in the middle of it here. Let's do a fight. Can I get into a fight here? There we go. Oh, so we have like a... Uh... A lot going on here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if I can... I'm trying to figure out if this is... This is like somewhat of an action RPG. I think some of the characters are doing their own thing. And that's why I'm confused. I think some of them... There, so this guy I can move. Oh yeah, super move. Cool. Like, defeat the dragon snake? I wonder if this whole game is blue like this. Okay, yeah, I couldn't I, find I, it. I, I beat the dragon snake. Alright, um, so another RPG. I think this is really cool. I bet there's a translation that exists for this one. Um, but I don't think... I'm trying to picture it. I really don't think Star Ocean came out uh, in English. <clears throat> there are Star Ocean games on the uh, PlayStation system. Okay, and then what do we have next here? This is from Chunsoft. I know Chunsoft. Let's take a look here. This is DMG. Oh, this is CGB. So we're getting into the color Game Boy games again here. So CGB uh, B F W J. Let's see what this is. Um, can't find quickly what this one is. Uh, Robert, uh, Callan has been collecting and playing retro games for a long time. I've been playing them just once in a while, but definitely Callan has been uh, been the collector for how long? Did you say? Oh, I've bit? been doing this for a long time, probably since I was uh, so probably about twenty years now in general, like overall. But. Um, you know, I kind of collect and sell off and do all sorts of things. So, um, you know, I'm also not familiar with me yet. I'm into, um, like, arcade stuff quite a bit, and I do a lot of that. Lately, I haven't been doing so much of that. We've been kind of getting to Mr. and doing our streaming on various consoles. I've been trying to go back and play, like, some more, um, like, classic PC games lately that I haven't done before. But, you know, I kind of uh, flip around a lot. Me and Raph both also got uh, uh, VR systems recently, so we've been playing a lot of VR stuff, including, like, online... Um, mini golf and some multiplayer stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to skip this one. This is also an RPG in Game Boy Color, uh, but it's called Mysterious Dungeon um, Desert Magic Castle. And then the final one from this set is yet another RPG. And this is AN6J. Let's see here. AN6. Hmm. Hmm. DMG A N six J Tales of Fantasia. So that's pretty cool. So that's uh, a popular one. Um, again, there's probably a translation for this one. I'm gonna skip it. Uh, let's see just what the condition is. Yeah, another uh, another black cartridge one. So it would work on Game Boy Color or Game Boy Original. What, what's the name? Uh, Tales of Fantasia. Yeah, I don't think any of these will be on your system if you haven't loaded up the Game Boy Color um, ROM set. No. Unfortunately. So we do have, uh, we've got two more games to look at then. So once we get rid of these. So we've got one more. This is the one I was saying I had no idea they made full size um, boxes like this for any Japanese game. So this is, this is really the one I wanted in the kit. Um, I think it's relatively rare because it's a, uh, you know, translation of an American game. But this has its own cellophane on it. Another. 
King of the Ring. King of the Ring. WWF. And I'm not sure if this has a different name in the US. I know it is, I, I totally recognize the cover, so I know for sure it was released in the US, but I don't remember if it's called King of the Ring. No, I don't have it. It's called some other kind of WWF. Look up WWF. Oh. There we go. Yep, there we go. Got there it. There you go. Right. Okay, let's take a look in here. Was it, wasn't this one rare or something? Or is there something to this? Uh, I just think this is a rare one because of the... I mean, the box size is just uncommon. I'm pretty sure this is, like, fairly expensive. This is the one I really wanted. You get Hulk Hogan there. Yokozuna? Yokozuna. Right? Isn't that Yokozuna? No, on the front is Brett the Hitman Hart, isn't it? Yeah, here in the manual. Maybe you can't see from where you are. Oh, I see. Okay. There we go. Okay, let's bring it up. So we've got uh, mm -hmm. player versus computer one on one. So this is um this is English, all English. Brett Hitman Hart, Narcissist, Sean yeah. Michaels, Mr. Perfect. I'll play as I'll play as Yokozuna. Yeah. I like Yokozuna. And Robert, I'm impartial to uh, the WrestleMania on the Super Nintendo. That that one I remember playing a lot as a kid. No music, kind of boring. Yeah. <laughs> Did you play uh, pro wrestling on the NES, Alan? Pro wrestling, uh, no. I think that that's one of the black box titles, right? One of the earliest ones. I can picture the spine of it. I can't picture the actual mm. picture on the front. Um, for NES, trying to remember which one I would have played for wrestling. But um, as I said, I, I really think it was like Sega Genesis when it, you know you could really get like the voice samples and cheering and that kind of stuff in there really good i think by sega genesis and super nintendo it was really like you know interesting to uh to actually listen to it oh and then it got to the point where you could like design your own entrance your own music yeah, yeah. your own moves i presume in this game you have like mortal kombat style special moves or something i don't know I'm not doing very well anyway. Oh, Brett. <laughs> Our character has a huge chest. Are we playing the same character? I, I'm playing as Yokozuna versus uh, okay. Bret Hart. I'm playing as Bret Hart. Bret the Hitman Hart, I believe, right? Yep. I always wanted his sunglasses. Yeah. That he would give away to the kids. I always... I. Yeah. I always thought The Undertaker was like the coolest wrestler that ever could exist. And I I think I I think I read that he's like still doing it or something. Yeah. How old is no, he I, now? Oh, I don't know. He's probably like 60. I mean, not that it's like it's still you know, still an athletic endeavor, not yeah. that I uh I was always scared of his uh his manager the Paul Paul Bear. Yeah. <laughs> he'd, he'd always be holding an urn. I can just remember, like, I can just remember, like, one of the, like, you know, seeing an episode of whatever you would call it, you know, episode or, like, a special or something. Yeah. And what was it? It was, like, The Undertaker, like, like nailed somebody in a coffin, like, put somebody in a coffin, nailed yes. it shut. And, like, I, yeah. I remember, like, trying to, like, tell my like parents about it as if this was, like, some, like, <laughs> you know, like, real event. Being like, oh, my God, I just saw this thing on TV and this guy, like... It looks like a monster and, you know, put the other wrestling yeah. guy in a coffin and closed it. Like, freaky, man. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, WCW did a lot of, like, Sunday afternoon yeah. stuff. It wasn't, like, wasn't as glamorous as WWF, but, yeah, I remember that. Ric Flair and Booker yeah. T and... 
All right. Well, I've had enough. Two. I've had enough of this. Now th this is. I mean, this is an interesting um, curiosity for sure to have in the collection. But uh, yeah, I still still not really sold on uh, wrestling games, especially uh, classic ones. But cool to have one of these Japanese games in the large box. I wonder if maybe it was only Acclaim games made by Acclaim um, that did it. I have seen a few other ones that exist. I just uh, and actually the Simpsons games, which are also by Acclaim, um, I was I missed out on on that. Somebody had all four of them, I think, and um, they had a very high buy it now price, and they kept bringing it down, bringing it down. And I thought I'd finally go for it, and then it was gone. So uh, I totally missed out for sure. All right, so I mentioned that there's a bonus game, and the bonus game. Um, so first of all, <laughs> I want to show you the the box that it came in. So you saw how well everything was packaged from Japan. Well, this this is what I got from the UK, like uh, uh, mm -hmm. an Amazon folder that was like folded over. This was in a bubble in a bubble mailer, but like it was you know it was never a box. Um, and the game <coughs> is called. Uh, Space Station Silicon Valley. Um, this is Game Boy Color, mm. so we won't be able to see it on uh, on Mister unless you um, again happen to have that one there. So this nope. game, there's a Space Station Silicon Valley game for N64. Um, I think is relatively rare or at least sought after. Uh, but this this game on the Game Boy. Uh, is unique to the European regions. So I've been watching, I've had a, a, a watch on Amazon, um, eBay for a long time now, just waiting for one to uh, to show up. Sorry, what was it called again? Space Station Silicon Valley. Look at lots of languages here. Mm. No, it's not on my Europe list. No, again, because it's a no. it's Game Boy Color no. release technically, so that's my guess. Actually, just as fun. Okay, let's try and get into it here. Hmm. Okay, let's take a look here. This is somebody's save file that, again, has survived, apparently. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's going on here. I do not know what is going on in this game. Oh, some English text. Get some money, or get some energy, get me a sheep. Oh, I'm a dog. Objective complete. You got the energy. Okay, well, that didn't take very long. I believe I need a sheep. There's really not a lot of animation in this uh, character. Mm. <laughs> Looks kind of like your new dog. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Kind of like a beagle mix or something. Mm -hmm. This is like a very empty game. I have no idea if there's anything like the um, N64 game. I do not don't know the content of that game. I thought that game was. Um, somewhat of a two-dimensional game as well it kind of stood out i think as a oh there's a sheep i found a sheep can i bite him Became the sheep somehow. Okay. Hmm. Logical. It says teleporter active. Maybe I can uh, exit zone.
I like the music in this. I just popped in another LGN wrestling game. Okay. Oh, I see you've got the Undertaker there. Yeah. Guilt floaty hop. Oh, cool. I can like float around with the sheep. Hmm. <laughs> so obviously you uh, can morph into different characters in this game. Here, let's look at teleporter. Can I go on this? Seems like a decent haul. From uh, from your order. Mm hmm. This is a this is a strange game. <laughs> All right, so I guess I beat a level there. So, okay. Um, I don't think I'm gonna play another episode. I think I should. I think I should probably start this one over at some point and see what uh, goes on from the start. All right. Well, yeah. So that was that was fun. Um, if I can bring them all in here at the same time, and we can, I can show you what they all look like for a bit of a, a bit of a haul picture. There's all those Game Boy um, RPGs that we really couldn't look at. We've got three, three tall games there. These are like um, later release. Let's get this one out of the way. The later release uh, Game Boy games, and then we've got six. Oh, I dropped them. Hold on. Embarrassing. Okay, so I've got yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six of these uh, smaller ones here. And then actually there's one more I forgot about that's still in the box. Okay, final game of the night. Hmm. Uh, I bought this one separately. Ah, that's right. We've got Legend of Zelda. Okay, this is Legend of Zelda. Um, oops, Link's Awakening. Let's check it out real quick. Now, this obviously has a, a US version, so you could load that up sure. if you want. And I'll load up the Japanese one. <laughs> Great shape, box, tiny bit bowed on the bottom, but that's okay. L sorry, Link's Awakening? Yeah, it might be called Link's okay. Awakening. We'll see in a sec. Yep. There you go. This recently got a complete uh, redesign for the Switch. Um, I like to play it on this. I like to go through this and see the original. There's a DX version that exists. Um, you know, should you want... Uh, uh, should you want the uh, color version? They made that. And then... The Switch version is completely different. Uh, completely different for graphics. It's you know in a tilt tilt shift looking um, graphics. Ooh, got some classic Zelda tunes here. Is that Yoshi's Egg there? No, this is uh Ooh, here we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Nice map here. Use your shield. It's funny how much more text they can fit on screen in uh, Japanese. I think it's a lot more. Oh, the poor chickens. Mm hmm. We have like a hook shot. That's cool. Oh, did you load a saved game? I did. Okay. You should see what's going on here. Um, you know, I've, I've have to say that I've always had a hard time staying uh, focused on <coughs> 2D Zelda games. I played. Um, oh, I feel like I've never I've never really been able to get into a link to the past. Um, I've never actually. First of all, I should have never played the original. I've uh, never played past like the second screen on the original Legend of Zelda or Zelda Two, and um, I have tried to play. Um, a link to the past many times and uh, like once I did get through I don't know maybe 30% of it but I don't know it doesn't um, doesn't hold my attention the way that uh, you know a few other two-dimensional RPGs did um, and uh, but I love the 3d ones all like uh, all of them actually I think uh, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker I thought was okay um, but then Twilight Princess, um, Skyward Sword I uh, loved all those. Didn't love Breath of the Wild so much. Um, I, I'm not as interested in open world games generally as some other people tend to be. Yeah. Now, Link to the Past, I, I definitely resonated with. I, I beat that many, many times. I love it. Yeah. Um, Breath of the Wild, I I just kind of almost gave up after like they wanted me to take photos of like mm -hmm. <laughs> some spot. And I was just like, yeah. you know what? I, I, that's... Uh, not interesting. Yeah. My uh, my wife's sister was playing it when she was here, and that was the very last thing she was doing was trying to like basically find the last photo. And uh, yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. I just find in general, with those um, open world games, like the it's it's hard to get me to really care about the collectibles. Yeah. Uh, I just usually don't care. Um, like I played, uh, I always talk about Horizon Zero Dawn as an open world game, sort of. Um, and I mean, it, it at least, uh, you know, most of the collectibles in that were specific to like, you'd have to search out certain animals to fight, to get certain materials. That was about as much. And, you know, you had still had many options. Like if you had to find a thunder jaw, you still had, you know, four or five different places you could actually go to find one. You weren't going to just one place for old material. So yeah, this is. A, I should give this a try properly for sure. Maybe the English yeah. version, of course, but definitely one you want to have in the in the collection if you're gonna have Game Boy games. I think having a copy of this one, uh, it's great to have there. Ooh. Yeah, and so it looks like all the boxes were in great shape. Yeah, this was a particularly good uh, haul. Um, I think this probably came from like a book off or something. So this would have been games that were like sold to a second hand shop and then um you know they're always sorted but in general i think it's just uh more common to keep track of packaging and instructions and everything um whereas here you know i just especially i remember as a kid i can remember ripping open my super mario brothers 3 box and tossing it aside instantly yep um, so yeah, I never kept any of that stuff. They, a little easier with like Sega Genesis um, when you got to clamshell cases, plastic cases that uh, you know stuck around. But um, yeah, in Japan it's just a lot more common. So you'll see a lot of these games. If you just want the cartridges, like you can buy cartridges for like fifty cents. Like if you go into uh, you know a game store in Japan, I went there on my on my honeymoon. They'll have bins where they're like. 100 yen like they're a dollar and like there's just and they're good games that are in there it's just that they sold in such high uh volumes that they just can't be worth anything especially with nothing differentiating mm -hmm. them um 
yeah, like, I mean, these are, these are like, these are, these games are just beautiful, perfect condition. Like, boxes are still, you know, crisp everywhere and everything. So, for, as, for a collecting perspective, displaying and stuff, you know, they're, they're great little artifacts. And, uh, you know, a lot of them are playable. Like, um, I would say, well, let's see how many we got here. So, I've got, let's take a look here. So, I would say these Game Boy Color games are not playable. I would say these ones are... Uh, and then maybe these two and Fire Pro. So I would say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I would say seven of these games are out of like the 18 are fully playable in English um, or don't require it. And then I would say there's probably a few more here you could get through if you really wanted to, but a few of them are pretty text heavy. So um, yeah, this is probably more of a collecting hall than a, a playing hall I would say. Uh, I'd say the older you get with games for Game Boy the more likely they are to work. But I mean um, you know as we're you're doing right now on Mister, I mean, there's a million ways to play these games so if you just want to play them you know you don't even have to buy them you can just uh, you know use your resources to play them. Um, mm -hmm. We've got Mister. we've got uh, Analog Pocket coming out. Uh, I pre-ordered that a long time ago Hopefully it will show up by December. It was their latest uh, um, update. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, I'll probably still, you know, grab a few of these uh, every once in a while. So um, we'll probably be back on Twitch on Saturday for a, a regular old game stream, probably with our buddy Eric. Yep. I don't know what we're going to do. We haven't really talked about what we might do then. And uh, Raph and I have a couple of, like, DOS games we want to get through. Uh, we had a blast playing um, Rise of the Dragon a few months ago, and there's a, not a sequel, but like a, another game by the same company called Heart of China that Raf uh, nicely went through, and uh, he knows how to beat it, so he's going <laughs> to coach me through it. Yep. Uh, yep. And we'll do that. That'll be fun. We've got, um, it's got some excellent uh, MIDI music, and I think we, uh, that's MT32, right? So we have real MT32 yep. hardware. I've got an MT100. Um, so yeah, we can we can enjoy mm -hmm. some some tasty MIDI tunes at the same time. Yeah, we might want to look into like uh, streaming simulcast with uh, YouTube and Twitch at the same time. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. Uh, would be nice yeah. to uh, to have to have both uh, platforms at once. So thank you, Raf, again for joining me, and 